Hello again, fiber friends. It's Cindy coming to you from Unique Fleece. Wanted to share a cautionary tale with y'all today. Uh, lessons learned that hopefully will prevent you from making some of the same mistakes that I made. So first, let me talk to you about the sweater that this, uh, this video is gonna be about. It's about, um, it's called the Freya hoodie. And it's hard to see in this black and white photo, but what this is is a stockinette stitch uh, top-down raglan sleeved hoodie with a deep V in the front that has a really pretty um, and it's also got this this border at the waist it's this really pretty Latvian style braid um, and that braiding so you start at the shoulders you go down you make a deep V and then um, the Latvian braid goes around the waist and it goes up both sides of the V and around the edges of the hood. And it's it, it's a it's a fun pattern to knit. It's it's interesting. It's an, it, you know it knits up pretty quickly. Um, this is designed to be knit in a DK or sport weight, and because the yarn that I spun for it came out at more of a worsted weight. I made adjustments in the needle size and in the size that I knitted, so it calls for needle size five, and the yarn that I spun knits up most nicely at a needle size eight. So since I went up three needle sizes, I went down three sweater sizes. So I'm knitting the extra small, which is still gonna be quite roomy on me, but I, I like that look for this sweater, I wanted it to be sort of a roomy, sweatshirty feel. And the yarn that I spun up definitely has that sort of texture. And I'm gonna talk about the yarn um, next. What I, what I wanted was a turquoise and orange hoodie. Um, I have not had any luck finding a turquoise sweatshirt anywhere um, that I wasn't willing to pay like $60 for. So I thought, well, I'll spin up some turquoisey yarn and make exactly what I want. So I bought this chunky spiral, which is really designed to be used as a super bulky weight yarn, but I love using it just as roving for my knitting. And it, it's got the slightest bit of twist in it, but not so much that you can't just pull a chunk off. Look how lovely that is. It's so soft and fluffy and light, and it's so, oh, it's just a dream to work with. I love it. Um, and it has just enough color in it that uh, it comes out when you spin it, but not so much that it's necessarily going to be um, a solid color, which I like. It's, it's very um, versatile. And so as you can see in it, it's got some turquoise and it's got some navy and then it's got some white. And that works up really nicely when I make the blend. And I'll show you um, what the end result looks like in what I've gotten done on the sweater so far. And you can see I'm using a contrasting color for that waist border. Um, but here's the cautionary part of this. Even though I wrote down, and this time I didn't write it on a post-it, I was smart, and I put it on an app on my phone called Google Keep, which I love. It's a little note-taking app. I put my, my grocery lists on there. I put anything that I want to keep and be able to find easily. I keep it all in Google Keep. So I, I took the total number of ounces from the pattern, broke it down into percentages, knowing that I wanted to use that as the base fiber. I think I weighed that like 80%. And so then I had 20% left to blend in some man-made mohair or man-made cashmere. And this stuff is amazing. Uh, I think it's softer than actual cashmere and it's a lot less expensive. Also, even though it's man-made and I think it's probably some kind of acrylic or nylon, it can be dyed with, um, with protein fiber dyes, so acid dyes, which I like because I have a lot more of those at home in my dye closet. Um, so I love this stuff, I highly recommend it. I think I bought this from RH Lindsay. Um, so those two got blended, and I'll, I'll pull everything back over on my lap so you can see it all together. Um, but then, when it came to the other two, I wanted some shine 
So I used some bamboo that I dyed with my, um, my Procyon MX Reactive dyes. And then I also dyed some cotton. And this is where things got tricky for me because I had some dyed already. I didn't go ahead and dye as much as I needed for the whole project ahead of time, which I should have done. Because after I got to the point on this sweater where I realized I needed a new ball because I'm almost out, this is all I've got left. I went ahead and decided I would um, blend some more. Well, here's what happened. I blended with just, just uh, cotton from the first batch and no bamboo because I didn't have any more dye. And so what happened was I got this very flat, one dimensional, and I'll hold it up so you can compare the two. This has that nice golden color in it as well. So I can see in here that I used the darker orange was the rayon and the lighter color, the like muted golden orange was the cotton. So I tried to replicate that in here, but I made a shortcut and what I got was something that I can't use in this project. It looks very different. So can't use that for this project. So I went back to the drawing board and tried to replicate it by adding some, I thought I needed to offset the orange and the cotton with some yellow. So I dyed some, I dyed some bamboo golden yellow. Well, you can see now I've got these two colors that are not the same as on here. So then I had to go back to the drawing board again and I realized that what I had done originally was to dye the, I'm getting, I'm losing track now of where I am, dyed this bamboo orange, dyed this, the half golden yellow, half Procyon MX orange. And so as I'm looking at it now, I'm thinking, hmm, probably still need to do another batch of cotton because this is the right color, I think, but this is not yellowy enough. This is still too orangey. And this, it's hard to, uh, I'm losing track of all my samples here, but the little bit of orange that I started with, it's, it's a cooler orange. You can see the difference when I hold them up next to each other. It's a cooler orange. And, you know, before I started doing all of this dyeing, I would have told you that orange is orange is orange. And as I now know, uh, that is not the case. So I wish I had written down what I had done initially so that I could have replicated it easily, but I didn't do that. I also wish that I hadn't started out with little bits and pieces of, um, rayon or not rayon bamboo and cotton that i already had dyed because i didn't have any record of what i had done to dye those sample pieces so now i am in a holding pattern until i can get more of this stuff dyed and spun and it's aggravating i've wasted a lot of time i've wasted a lot of fiber although you know, these are some of my favorite colors, so it, it, it's not really a waste. It will get used. But I wish I hadn't, you know, spent so much time on something that I can't use on a project that I'm already in the process of knitting. So anyway, lesson learned. Um, I will make a commitment to myself to take better notes in the future, and I hope you learned something from my mistake. Um, I also hope you'll check out this pattern Freya it's by Vera Sanon love the pattern um, hope you guys are having a great day knitting um, if you like my video or have questions let me know and I look forward to uh, talking with you all soon thanks for watching